Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back for another series we've been doing here. Why did it work? Why didn't it work? And you guys gave me a lot of feedback on the last two videos, which I appreciate any and all, constructive or just otherwise. But I also did ask for movie titles or TV shows you want me to talk about. And there was next to nothing, but I kept noticing when I was watching the Rings of Power video, I kept bringing up The Hobbit. So today, we'll be talking about The Hobbit. And specifically, what went well with it. That interests you? I'll see you after the credits. All right, now that you've survived till after the credits, we're gonna hit you with the subliminal subscribe button. Thanks, appreciate it. Anyway, let's get in with the content. Look, The Hobbit, originally wrote by J.R. Tolkien in 1930 was when he started the book. It was published in 1937. It was originally a story for him to share with his four kids and just something to kind of a bedtime story, but imagine your bedtime story is told to you by one of the greatest authors the world has ever known. Pretty awesome, right? Well, you would think that based upon that book, they get some pretty solid movies out of it. And you would think correctly if they followed the book. Um, the movies have very, very mixed reviews. The first movie, 64% Rotten Tomato score, 74% for the second film. So, Desolation of Smog came in a little bit about an unexpected journey. And then the very last one, The Battle of Five Armies, 59%. So overall, you're getting 66% for your movie on your Rotten Tomato score. That would give you a D. Like, you're passing. Because 63% is passing. You are hanging in there by the hair on your chinny chin chin. And there's a lot of stuff to break down on that. There'll be another video next week on what went wrong with this. But we're only going to talk about what went well with this. And I honestly believe there were some things that went very, very well. And look, you can't start by talking about the Lord of the Rings universe, because this is tied very closely in with the original Lord of the Rings, without bringing up Howard Shore. The music that this man has brought to this universe has made some of the easiest tunes to hum along to, sing along to, and just flat out enjoy a fantastic fantasy universe, and just lose yourself in three hours of amazing storytelling, or what should be amazing storytelling, each and every time, just based on the track alone. Howard Shore is up there in my mind with John Williams as one of the greatest composers of my generation, let alone probably most generations that have existed. And I absolutely love his music. Um, the new tracks for this one, Goblin Town, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. And then Into the Fire is the one that got a lot of critics' reviews sung by someone that you guys may have known, Ed Sheeran. So that pretty good start right there. Howard Shore is a phenomenal foundational piece. People can say a lot of things about Lord of Rings and about Star Wars. However, can't talk about its music. The music is always top-notch stuff based upon, you know, Howard Shore and John Williams. Straight up killing it every single time they're in recording with. And then here is my other point I wanted to talk about for things that were good. The acting in this series, phenomenal. I'm gonna mention a couple actors, a couple actresses. Let's talk about them just for a moment here. And you can't start off without having a good movie, without having a good lead actor. And Martin Freeman, you know, the guy who played Everett Ross in Black Panther and throughout a couple Marvel Cinematic movies, making some random appearances here and there. Yeah, um, he stole the show. Every single scene that Martin Freeman was in is absolutely fantastic. He is the highlight of the film, top to bottom. There's a reason it's called The Hobbit, not The Dwarves, because Martin Freeman stole the show, hands down, every single scene. And also, um, apparently, he's a hilarious guy. They have an outtake of him flipping off the camera of at least five minutes worth of footage of just him straight up flipping the bird at the camera in every single out scene. That in and of itself, hilarious, great content. Appreciate that. And then the other person who stole the show was only in the first film, Andy Serkis, Gollum. Some of you may know him, know him as Alfred from The Batman or the spy in Andor. Well, not really spy. 
prisoner turned spy. Interesting twist on that one. Go check out Andor. Star Wars, the best thing they've done in years. Take that Mandalorian. Andy Serkis, phenomenal job acting as Gollum. His whole dichotomy of him talking to himself and he starts arguing with himself and Martin Freeman's like, I didn't say anything. He's like, I wasn't talking to you. Perfectly shows that the whole Gollum Smeagol dynamic destroyed him. And the funny thing about all this whole magic ring business, um, originally it was just a magic ring, but when the Lord of the Rings started being written, it turned into the One Ring. So it was a rewritten effect that the One Ring was within Gollum's position as opposed to just a magic ring that drove him mad. Fun touch up there, Token. Worked out very well, obviously. And it played very well into the series. And then we have a couple returning characters that we obviously have to give credit to. Sir Ian McKellen, Gandalf. Uh, can you really mention this series without talking about Gandalf? His air for theatrics, his passion, and his overall drive to give the best performance every single time he's on set is outstanding. And most of you will know him from X-Men. And, well, this man has been in so many titles. It took up an entire page just to talk about the prominent role season. So I'm just going to mention that he was in X-Men as well. And be like, look, Ian McKellen, phenomenal actor. And then we're going to talk about his other guy that he was alongside with, Sir Christopher Lee, who is now the late Sir Christopher Lee, Saruman. And he played a very minor role in this overall due to how old he was at the time of the filming of this. I believe this is one of the last films he ever reported before he unfortunately passed. And well, you can kind of, you can kind of tell. Um, this dude, Sir Christopher Lee, is the only person f from the cast who has met J.R. Tolkien. Only one. And he got his blessing to play Gandalf. He got permission from the author to play the titular role of the main wizard. And he still didn't get the part. But ultimately, we got an amazing performance from Ian McKellen and Christopher Lee in both their respective roles throughout Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. So, um, kind of worked out very well in the end. And I know Christopher Lee was in the third film, but we'll talk about that at another point in time. Also, we have a couple other Marvel returning characters. Benedict Cumberbatch. You guys know him as Doctor Strange. I know him as the Dragon Smog. And watching him writhe around on a floor, because literally that's what he did to get the dragon's mannerisms correctly, they could 3D capture, render, and then buffer, and turn that into Smaug was absolutely amazing. You could tell that Smog was done the umpteenth degree of perfection because of the acting performance that was put on by this man. And then when they ran out of stuff that they could use Benedict Cumberbatch for, you know, the third film, you could tell the dragon's quality took a steep nosedive. Go figure. But again, humans don't fly, so it'd be hard to render that. And then we have Lee Pace, or as Marvel fans would know him, Ronan the Accuser, Thranduil. The dude who refused to have his eyebrows died for this role. And, uh, well, it paid off. I know it's not book accurate. You guys can come at me for that one. I know it's not book accurate. However, it gives a very distinctive look between him, the king, the leader of the elves of Markwood, and the rest of the elves we have seen throughout Middle Earth, either in Lothlorien or in Rivendell. And I think that pays off wonderfully to kind of separate us and give us distinction in our universe as to our different, while they are of the same race, there are distinctions among them that needed to be noted. And having even just something as simple as just their eyebrows being slightly darker, it panned out, it worked out, his acting performance was amazing. His battle in the Battle of Five Armies, incredible entrance, and just commanded a lot of the scenes that he was in. Uh, Billy Connolly was in this, most of the people will know him from The Father from Budok Saints, he was Dane, he was in the last film. Phenomenal actor Stephen Fry, master of Lake Town. He was also in Sherlock Holmes, the second one, a game of Shadows, alongside another Marvel standout you guys love, Robert Downey Jr., and he was Sherlock's brother. He did an amazing job as the master of Lake Town in this. He has an air and a presence and authoritarianism about him that makes you want to hate this guy, and, well, he's supposed to be a villain and very greedy, just 
overall despise most of the people in town that he is mayor of. Told that off wonderfully. He did a great job. And then, of course, I can't mention Saruman and Gandalf without mentioning Hugo Weaving coming back, Elrond, and Kate Blanchett returning as Galadriel, or as you Marvel heads know her as Hela. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok Hela. That's the Lady of Lothlorien. Interesting how that worked out. And ultimately, worked out very well in the end for everything. So, I mean, look, having big name actors can lend a lot of credibility to your writing. But again, when you're doing an adaptation, the writing has to be solid that you're adapting. Otherwise, you run in some gray areas. We'll get into that in the part two. But look, the music from this series overall was fantastic. The acting from the people I mentioned, absolutely fantastic. And Peter Jackson, he did a good job of adapting, I'll say, part one. But this is a three-part trilogy. And we'll talk about that in the next video of things that I ultimately think they could have done better. Overall, I enjoyed these films. But ultimately, they fell far short to the originals. And if you want to stay tuned for that, you know how to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next Friday for that video. In the meantime, I got two more videos for you. Enjoy.